bandsaw. Now, when you do have a, a log, that maybe that's been cut with a chainsaw, and this face is not 90 degrees uh, to the direction of the log, we have to square it up. And I'm going to illustrate how we do that on the bandsaw now. show you just a few of the templates that I use. Uh, I have a number of different uh, uh, panel paneling templates, different bowl, bowl heights. I made a small little uh, ball that I stick in there. I've seen people hammer in nails and, and use screws. Uh, let me tell you, a little awl is the simplest way to fasten this to a, to a bowl blank. Uh, and that works. That, that tip I got from uh, my buddy Wes Jones and in my club and that just works real good and I just keep that handy right here where I can always always find it um, I always keep a set of uh, ear ear muffs over here automatic and I use a bandsaw uh, another safety feature take care of your hearing because I turn on the uh, I have a switch right here to turn on the dust collector and as soon as that and the bandsaw go on I put on my Hearing, hearing protection. A few other items. I've got some some templates out of some paneling. These just make it uh, make it a little easier when I have a block of wood. Um, like this. This is just an example. I can get a better feel for uh, how I want to break that down. Now I want to break this down into a couple of three inch uh, 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 pieces of spindle stock for. Uh, pepper mills or something, or boxes, or or uh, two and a half, or or four inches, and uh, they're handy. I have them have them nearby, and they just go on a hook hook right here. I also have a pencil. I also have a uh, small ruler handy that I can I can grab to to, to mark on this. Uh, behind me here, I have some pieces of chalk. I think I mentioned a pencil and um, task lighting. I have a simple magnet uh, light here, which gives me a little extra uh, lighting. And it, it, as you know, the older you get, the more light you need. Um, I made this little little gadget. I don't know if you can see that. It says tension on, tension off. It's kind of a reminder to me to when I come up here to turn it on to, to check the tension. Uh, just one more thing to, to, to keep you safe because I do uh, tension this machine and then take the tension off with the lever and a, and a lot of band saws have those tension releases uh, and it is a scary thing when you turn one on with the tension, uh, uh, tension off and, and the blade comes off. Okay, I'm going to band saw this log. I've already cut it uh, uh, from chainsaw outside in half. Uh, with a flat side that'll rest. One little trick that helps is uh, putting it on a piece of wax paper. Makes it slide a little easier. I've already adjust, adjusted this to the appropriate height. I have a chalk line here to line it up. 
and I've already got the uh, tension set, uh, so we're ready. To, we're ready to go. Turn on the dust collection. Needed to wait for that uh, blade to quit moving. Now we can evaluate where we drew the cuts. Uh, missed the pith a little bit. Here's the pith. I was hoping to get a little bit on the other side. That's all right. We'll turn that off because this is going to be fresh. Now, one possibility is using a round template on here. So I have these different size templates cut. Um, I keep a ruler handy and this is eight and a half inches. So this one ought to be pretty doggone close. I'm going to center it assuming I have a minor check or two here. Actually this end on this side is fresh so I'm going to move this template to the very end. I eyeball it to get an equal amount of bark on both sides. Then I use a small little awl. I could use a screw. And we're going to go ahead and lower this to a safer height so that we know it'll clear it. No reason to have that much blade exposed if it's not necessary. With the fence and the flat side, it makes it a little easier to, to square it up when you're cutting off the uh, the pith out of the out of the, the log. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that now.
All right, now I'm going to take that centerpiece with the pith in it and cut it into some spindle stock. And I'm going to start with getting rid of the bark on one side. Now turn on the... First thing I'm going to do is lower this to a safer height. Cutting greenwood has its challenges. Um, one of the things you need to occasionally clean off your table, the simplest way that, that I do periodically is just put a little WD-40 on it. I use a Scot scotch Brite pad and I just kind of rub it down a little bit and then rub it off with a, uh, a piece of kitchen towel. Uh, longer term, uh, or occasionally, I'll use a product like, like Bow Shield and put a wax coat on it to prevent it. But, Fortunately, I've got a, a central layer and, and heat. Uh, my shop's in my basement, and as a result, the humidity's low. I, the rust is usually not a, not much of a concern for me, so if I just wipe it down a little bit, I'm generally good to go. Uh, the pitch has a tendency to gunk up on your wheels. Uh, sometimes I clean those when it's moving with with a uh, flat flat piece of wood like this. 
as it's turning right up against, try to clear it. Before I use it though, I try to remember, don't always do it, to use a uh, saw blade lubricant like this. It's basically just a soft wax uh, stick. I think any soft wax would probably work. Actually, I, I haven't tried it, but even some floor floor wax would probably do fine to, to help keep it from, from sticking and, and gunking in here. Uh, long term, every now and then, if it gunks up too bad, it's probably advisable to take the the blade off and, and, and clean it with a little, uh, some type of pitch remover product. It also has a tendency to gunk up on the, uh, the tires. Uh, I always do a thorough cleaning with the pitch remover on the tires when I change the blades. Other than that, occasionally I'll just use a flat piece like this and by hand as it turns around I'll scrape, scrape the, uh, the gunk off on the lower wheel and, and the upper wheel. Uh, another problem I get, and I'll change the camera angle so you can see this a little better, is, is how this stuff gets stuck, uh, all the little frizzies, especially when you're cutting in grain of really green wood, and some woods are especially bad. Bradford Pear, my, one of my favorite woods, is one of the worst in terms of uh, clogging up the uh, bandsaw. So let me change the view. When you're doing a lot of cutting, you really have to pay attention to the area where the frizzies and, and dust can collect in here. Uh, as you can see in the pictures I've got, how it can really build up. Uh, when I remove this, this grate, from this dust collection port, uh, it really it really helped uh, the uh, the wet stuff moving. The problem is that stuff is so wet and so damp uh, it, and heavy, the dust collector will barely move barely move it. Any it, it creates a real a real drag. So uh, you've got to stop and open it up and. And, and pay attention to the dry stuff, uh, the wet stuff that's really, uh, really collecting, as shown in these these pictures. Uh, over here, you can see the little brush I mentioned earlier that, that helps clean the uh, your wheel as it goes around. Pay attention uh, to that as well. Uh, underneath here, I'm not going to show a shot. There's some lower bearings. They will have a tendency to get a lot of dust around, and if you're not careful, they can really get into your bearings and your bearings. Uh, may need uh, uh, periodic maintenance uh, uh, when it when it gets packed packed in there too much. So you got to keep that area clean. Uh, 